be to God. You never fall down on your word. You never come short. The writer said in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. Word and the word God. was God. Oh, glory be to God. And Lord, I bless your name today because you are the word. Without you, Lord, we can stand. Without you, Lord, we can think. Lord, without you, we can't walk. Lord, without you, we can't breathe. All things come into being because of the word. Oh, glory be to God. In Genesis, it said, oh, glory, thank your name, Lord. In the beginning was the word. And we thank the Lord for the word. Oh God, I can remember over how many hundred thousand years ago when you stepped out in space, hallelujah, in the middle of nowhere. You said the earth was without form. It was without shape. To me, it was like a blank slate. And you open up your mouth. And you said, bring forth. You send out the word. And you said, bring forth. And quicker than the words could have left your mouth. The Bible said fishes and birds and bees swamp the rivers and the seas and fill the air with their wings hallelujah glory be to God your word bring things into being glory be to God yes Lord your word yes Lord I thank you for the word I thank you for the power of the word I thank you today mighty God and I pray Lord that as we come you will transform us Lord you will help us Lord to be adhered to the word because Lord without the word we can't do nothing the word is substance and its source yes Lord God Almighty the word is to teach us the truth the word is to teach us the right things the word is to lead us in the path of righteousness Lord you said blessed are those that hunger and thirst of the righteousness for they shall be filled and today Lord as we come we want to be filled up with your word hallelujah 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 oh my God I thank you today and I give you praise for the word. Lord, I thank you for the blood because as we come, Lord, the writer said, what can wash away our sins? Uh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Uh, and oh God, uh, we thank you for the blood that was shed as well. Uh, because Lord, we cannot be whole. We will not be made whole without the blood. And as we walk into this place today, God, I'm asking that it will be a safe harbor. May we find safety in this house today. Amen. May we find safety. Lord, may we find Amen. peace of mind. Lord, may we find comfort. Oh, Lord, many of us are broken. But God, you can put us back together. Many of us, Lord, have lost our first love. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and the Father, we will receive our portion of blessings. Lord, you said you fall the rain upon the just and the unjust. And oh, God, we know that you're a God of truth. You can't lie. So, Father, here is the service today. I place it in your hands. Amen. I pray, Lord, that you will bless the, the singers. Oh, God, as they usher us into praise, Lord, help them to understand that the praises belongeth unto you. And they will get the victory at the end of the journey if they fail not. Amen. I pray, Lord God Almighty, for the men as they pray, the musical instruments, Father, you will. Touch their fingers today in a mighty way that the worst service, the worship, will come up to you, Lord, like a sweet-smelling savor. Oh, God, everything will be in harmonizing, amen, in accordance to your will. And, Father, I pray for the man's servant that will be coming forward to bring forth the word in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I pray that our ears will not be itchy so that we become uncomfortable. I pray, mighty God, that we will attend and listen attentively to the meal that will be served. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're about to feast at the master's table. And I pray, Lord, that you'll prepare our hearts. Glory to God, so that we'll be receptive to that which will be served. Father, bless everyone individually and collectively. And as we tarry throughout the rest of this day, glory be to God, I pray that you will manifest yourself through us in a mighty way. Not only will we feel your presence, but God will see the manifestation of your power. Have your way, blessed Jesus, as I give you glory and praise and honor. And I say thanks in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord God. At this time, we'll invite Sister Ezra Joseph to come forward. She would read the scripture for us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God. Hallelujah. Uh, the scripture reading is taken from Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yes. He said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the last, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband, which was with her, and he did eat. Amen. We praise the Lord God. I'm going to invite the congregation to be seated. Normally at this time, we would repeat the Ten Commandments, but because we had a late start, we apologize to our guest. We'll forego the Ten Commandments for this week. At this time, we'll go straight into our tithe and offering. And so we want to remind our brethren that we have three options available to you for giving. Firstly, uh, you can give through, um, of course, those who are present, uh, through the offer, off, uh, offering baskets that will be coming through. And then secondly, you can give online. So for those who are watching or those in the audience um, who may not have physical cash with them, but you'd like to contribute to the ministry, we pray that you will take advantage of this option. We also have a debit machine here, which provides additional flexibility for those who would like to give in a different way. At this time, the, offer, the, the ushers will be coming through the aisles, and I'm going to invite the praise team to minister in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Amen. Will the congregation please rise if you're able? Father, we give you praise in this hour. For it is you that have made us and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of your pastures. And we enter now into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Father, your people have sung the song right now, Enlarge My Territory. Father, we pray the prayer of Jabez of all the people right now to expand them and enlarge them. God, that the weak will say, I am strong. Hallelujah. And the poor will say, I am rich for what the Lord has done. Oh God, I pray that you will continue to bless your servants. God, create opportunities and jobs and, and create moments, expand businesses over the lives of your people. For they have given unto you with their sincere heart. And I pray, God, that you will cause them to ride upon the high places of the earth. And God, that you will expand their borders. And that, God, you will make them to be the head and not the tail. Give God glory, church. Open doors for them that have been closed, Father. And lead them into victory. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Let the church say, would you say amen, church? Remain standing. Amen. We are about to enter into worship. Amen. Amen. Amen, church. Amen, church. I did not leave my house today, and neither did you, to become a spectator. We left our homes with one intention, and that is to come into his courts and to give him praise. Come on, church. Come on, church. We came here to give God praise. Amen. Amen. We don't normally do this, but I'm going to ask you to look to your neighbor and say, I came to give God praise. Just look at somebody. It's going to feel uncomfortable a little bit. It always feels uncomfortable, but that's all right. It always feels uncomfortable. But we came to give God praise. Amen. Amen, church. Come on, let me hear you on this side. If you came to give God praise, come on, say hallelujah. Shout hallelujah on this side. We came to give him praise. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for all that he has done for us. And I love this song. It says to give and take away. But my heart will choose to say, blessed be your name. Thank you, God.
fighting for you. He's fighting for you. He's fighting for you. He's fighting for you. fighting for you he's fighting for you you don't have to fight for yourself he's a mighty warrior he's fighting for you hallelujah amen it may not feel like he's fighting for you sometimes you're wondering where is he How comes he's not showing up? How come things look the same way every day? But I'm going to tell you this. If you stand in faith, he's a mighty warrior and he's great in battle and he's fighting for you. Oh God, somebody believe me here today. Hallelujah. If you're able to be seated, you may. Praise the Lord God. Man, I feel the victory in this house. Hallelujah. 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 You have a right to praise God, you know. You have a right. There's no battle that he can't fight for you. Oh, come on, church. There's no enemy that you're facing that he cannot defeat. Amen. There is no circumstance in your life that he's not aware of. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I want to tell you the preacher is coming, but as they sung that song, Mighty Warrior, I want to share something with you briefly, just 30 seconds. For those who know, I've worked for the bank for over 23 years. It's my 23rd year. And month after month, year after year, I get assignments, I do all kinds of things. It just seemed like nothing was going anywhere. I want to tell you this, that a couple months ago, I got guy that used to work for me went to work somewhere else and he introduced me to the third largest guy in the company when he introduced me the guy said come and see me when I went to see him uh, the guy said immediately after I left the office he said that guy I want him to work for me for 20 years as a manager I've been waiting for an opportunity and it wouldn't come what mighty warrior On August 3rd, I move into that new office. <laughs> I've been great. 20 years I've waited for this. But I never lost faith in God. I'm not telling you the story because I want you to think of me differently. I want you to think about your journey. You are in a place right now that it's difficult. It's hard. It feels like, man, year after year, there's no victory. But I want to tell you he's a mighty warrior. In one moment, he can change your circumstance. By one phone call, things can change for you. Just meeting that one person, amen, can change your life forever. He's a mighty warrior. Somebody ought to give God praise as the preacher comes. Come on, shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Exalt his name in this house.
God is amazing. You know, I asked, the, he's, the third, he's the third guy down from the CEO. He's the third guy down from the CEO. And I said to him, you know, there's not a lot of African-American persons in the executive. And I said, I'd like to join it. He said, listen, I'm going to be your mentor. I'm going to be your mentor. Mighty warrior, great in battle. Wait upon the Lord and put your trust in him. Do not be afraid. Do not worry. Do not compromise. Be, be strong in the Lord and in the power of God's might. It may be long, but he's coming through for you. Say, mighty warrior, great in battle. When it's my time to preach, I'll talk some more about it, but it isn't. If you look on your programs, you will say, notice that says Adrian Valentine. But he doesn't look like an Adrian. This is Pastor Lynch Anastasio. And today, he has been given the task and the mandate to bring a blessing over your life. He has been chosen not by the church, but by Jesus Christ himself to speak life into your experience so that if there be any doubt in your mind that God is not fighting for you he will dispel those doubts and fears and you will know that you have a mighty warrior great in battle it gives me great pleasure right now both to those watching online and those in this audience to bring forth the preacher for the day Pastor Lynch and Astacio, may I invite the congregation to stand and receive him in Jesus' name. We praise the Lord. Let the church praise the Lord. Just remain on your feet for a couple minutes and give God the praise that he deserves. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. David said, I'll bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Give the Lord a clap and a praise, for he is worthy to be praised. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Praise God for the introduction. You know, Brother Valentine, Adrian Valentine, and Lynch Anastasio have one thing in common. Our middle names. He is Alexander. I'm Alexander. So it's double greatness. Amen. Praise the Lord. So if I stand here, I still represent him. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm honored to be chosen today to bring a word to us. Bless the Lord. And you know, brethren, in the week I was thinking, and I didn't think I'd be here because the allergies were so terrible. And God said that he is preparing a people to come here on June the 1st to listen to a word. Bless the Lord. And he has chosen me to be the deliverer and the messenger of that word. Bless the Lord. And I pray to God today that the word that God has given me, I know it's going to be for you, it's going to be for me, it's going to be for the musicians, it's for the moderators, it's for everyone that names the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. You see, what I realize today is that God's people have lost focus. Hallelujah. God's people have lost focus. To make it evident to you, and to make it real, the worship should have been going on still. The anointing that has been flowing is to pull down strongholds. Bless the Lord. It's to break down barriers. The Bible tells us to resist the devil, and he would flee from us. Praise the Lord. The church has lost focus, and in losing focus, we have lost our way. Praise the Lord. Whether we like it or not, the church today 
is not the church of yesterday. Praise the Lord. Technology has increased. A level of intelligence and awareness has increased. We deal and we live now and we function in a global sphere. And with that, we have lost focus. But focus wasn't lost because of technology. Focus was lost all the way back in the Garden of Eden. Bless the Lord. That's where our focus was shifted. The Bible tells us in the scripture reading that the serpent was more subtle than any other beast in the garden. Bless the Lord. And the scripture reading went on to inform us that for the first time in recorded history, a snake was speaking. I said the first time, it's not the only time. Because although the legs were taken away from the snake, we got some two-legged snakes still. I said it was the first time that a serpent spoke, but it wasn't the last time. Maybe you haven't dealt with some snakes in your time or in your life, but the devil is still using whoever he can. So he, pre he proposed something to Eve, and I'd like the scripture reading to go back on the screen so you can follow along with me. Genesis chapter 3, reading from verse, chapter, verse 1. And it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he, the serpent, said unto the woman, that'll be Eve, Yea, hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, this is now communication between an animal and a human. Praise the Lord. It's the first recorded such instance in the Bible. And she said, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said. God had said. Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And the operative word, church, is God had said said it. Praise the Lord. We lose focus when we don't realize what God had said. Praise the Lord. When God says something, there is no room for negotiation. God says it, he means it, and that settles it. Praise the Lord. So Eve said, God said we should not eat that of that tree. We should not even touch that tree. Praise the Lord. Verse number four. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Operative word, surely. She was playing around with the words in her mind. As he does today to you and I. Verse five. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened so we know she wasn't going to die. And you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Bless the Lord, church. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, she had food all along, church. She had food all along. The scripture doesn't tell us that Eve was hungry. And that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And from that very moment, their focus shifted. Bless the Lord. 
The serpent made a proposal to Eve. And the Bible said that she thought about it. It looks good for food. It's pleasant to the eyes. And it's a full desire to make one wise. Praise the Lord. So she weighed her options. The devil was using his very own strategy on Eve. I'll show you why. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 14, reading from verse 12. We want to see how our focus shifted. Isaiah 14, 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? 13, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Praise the Lord. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Bless the Lord. So Lucifer was using his very own strategy on Eve. Praise the Lord. He's instigating the woman to oppose the authority which is God. Bless the Lord. The proposal that he made to Eve and caused her focus to be shifted is evident today in the 7 billion plus in our human race. Praise the Lord. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. John is saying, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Praise the Lord. How did our focus get shifted from God to ourselves? Bless the Lord. When the Israelites was in Egyptian captivity, the Bible tells us that they waxed rich. And they were increased in goods. And life was good for the Israelites in Egypt. Praise the Lord. And then Pharaoh realized that the Israelites was getting too strong, too powerful. And they were making literally too many babies. They was multiplying rapidly. Bless the Lord. And Pharaoh and his men devised a scheme to put the Israelites into subjection. And not to allow them to overpower the Egyptian people. Praise the Lord. When the Israelites were prospering, they didn't remember God. But the minute oppression came upon them, they started to cry out to God. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us that God heard the cry of the Egyptian because of their oppressors. God chose a man, God conditioned a man, and God sent a man down to them to deliver them. And that man we know, his name was Moses. The name Moses means to draw out. Moses himself was drawn out from the river. And Moses was sent to draw God's people out of Egypt. Praise the Lord. I want us to understand where our focus was shifted. When the Israelites was delivered and crossed the Red Sea, they realized they didn't have all the niceties that Egypt had provided for them. They forgot the condition that that 
easy life brought them into, which was oppression. And they started to cry out to Moses. It's better we were in Egypt. The theme for the month is abandoning the world. The theme for the month is abandoning the world. I have heard many a preacher say, especially at baptisms, that brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so realize that the world has nothing to offer. It's not a true statement. If you know your Bible, that's not a true statement. The world has a lot to offer. The world has a lot to offer. If the world had nothing to offer, there's nothing to abandon. Amen? If the world had nothing to offer, we won't be singing goodbye world. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way. Praise the Lord. But those who have accepted Jesus Christ later on in life, they knew that the world had a lot to offer. If you're born and bred in church and that's all you know, then you realize, you, you think to yourself, there is nothing there. It's, uh, <laughs> it's false. Praise the Lord. It's false. Why do you think people leave the church? Praise the Lord. They want to experience carnival. Song say, would you like to rock it with me? Say yes. Praise the Lord. The world has so much to offer us. But the difference is, church, that what the world is offering is temporary. What God is offering is eternal. The church, the world cannot offer you peace. The world cannot offer you the joy of your salvation. The world cannot offer you the tranquility that comes with knowing Christ. Jesus Christ himself said, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Amen. Praise the Lord. So although the world has its many things to offer you, it cannot offer you peace. Praise the Lord. If your focus is shifted, you can enjoy what the world has to offer. Trust me. Praise the Lord. Bless God. That is why you can look back on your life and say, how I got over. Amen. My soul looks back and wonder how I got over. Praise the Lord. You have found yourself in some places that the only reason you're sitting here today is because Jesus Christ came there and delivered you from that. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. You know the strongest people, sometimes you put on a sort of facade and people think that you're so strong. Praise God. Not understanding the battles that you got to go through. Psalms 91 and verse 3 says, Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. The fowler is the evil one. Praise the Lord. The fowler was a term... Back in the days of, 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 of the guys who would trap fowls, different types of fowls, birds, waterfowls, and different fowls of the air. He would be called a fowler. But fowler also, also means to foul you up. Praise the Lord. You see, when you're setting a snare, you set different snares for different birds. You set different traps for different animals. You won't take a dollar bill and put it in a, for a, in a mouse trap. You take cheese or a peanut. The devil knows exactly how to sneer you and I. David said some trust in chariots and some in horses and some in their wives. And some in their husbands. And some in their fat bank accounts on their RRSPs. And the GICs. And they say, I got my next retirement covered. Praise the Lord. But we will remember the name of the Lord, our God. Praise the Lord. 
The fowler comes to trap you in so many different ways. He will use many different means and schemes to get you. Bless the Lord. Because he knows that Lynch cannot be tempted with money. He would not bring money to me. I remember back in the day when this minister was supposed to come to Trinidad in early 80s. And all the churches in Trinidad was preparing for this mega preacher to come down. And the week before he came to Trinidad, the stadium and everything is booked and everything is set. He was pulled over in a traffic stop with a prostitute. And it was the beginning of a domino effect of how the great can fall. How are the mighty fallen, the word of God says. Praise the Lord. And sometimes when you fall and your wings broken, there is no way to recover. You can never soar to the heights that you once had in God. The snare of the fowler. He knows your weakness, Brother Brown. He can never bring something to me that he knows I won't even pay any mind to. Bless the Lord. The Bible tells us that he is cunning and he is crafty. Praise God. The fowler keeps you from church. He keeps you from fasting. He keeps you from involvement in Christ and his kingdom activities. Praise the Lord. The fowler might not want to keep you away from church. Because he doesn't, he doesn't go to extremes. As I said, he's subtle. But he wants to give you just enough to make you think that everything is okay. Our focus has been shifted because instead of abandoning the world, we have embraced the world. Praise the Lord. If the world has no trouble with you, you're with them. You didn't hear me. Jesus said the world will hate you. But don't be concerned because they hated me first. Bless the Lord. We can't want to be friends with the world and still walk with Christ. It is impossible. Now, I tried to square that up when that came to my mind, and I said, but God is contradicting himself because he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And church, yes, we ought to love the world to the point that we'll show them how extreme it is and how serious it is that they accept Jesus Christ. We have people in the world. We have friends and colleagues. We have family in the world. That if they die, they die without God and Christ. So do I love them? Yes, I do. Do I want them to hear God's voice and to answer? Yes, I do. Praise the Lord. But we cannot embrace the world in this. That, and the things that go on in the world. Praise the Lord. How do we switch and sharpen our focus? Firstly, John chapter 14 and verse 1 said, Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me, Jesus speaking. In my father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, Pastor Green, I would have told you. Jesus was just coming off the conversation at the Lord's Supper table in John chapter 13. Where he washed the disciples' feet, and he told them what was going to happen. And he told Judas, the devil now is in you, go do what you got to do quickly. And he must have sensed. 
that the other 11 was getting sad and anxious because he's speaking in parables. And he's going, and they don't know where he's going, and I want to go with you. They normally go with him for the last three and a half years. Wherever he's going, they're going. And three and a half years is a short time. And the disciples didn't think that they're going to be coming to join forces with this man for a short-lived life. And he said to them, he said, let not your heart be troubled. And I ask myself in trying to refocus and to recalibrate my mind, does the church still believe in Jesus coming soon? Because had we embraced that idea and be one with it, our lives would be different. We need to embrace the fact that Jesus Christ is coming soon. We need to understand that where there is an emergency in the street, they the, 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 the tell you, once you hear the siren, pull to the right and stop. Because there is an emergency. I look at the news for the past year. In regards to the southern border in the U.S., and they say it is a crisis at the border. The crisis is that more people are coming to the border than the border agents can handle. We have a crisis in the world. And it's only Jesus Christ can remedy that. Praise the Lord. You see, we have this insatiable appetite and this desire to acquire things that if the world has to look at us and say, aren't you the one that said Jesus is coming soon? And all the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And there shall be a new heaven and a new earth. Paul said, I count all things lost for the excellency of the cross of Christ. Paul said, I count all things but dung for the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So how do we switch? We need to understand, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. Bless the Lord. In Micah chapter 6 and verse 8, if you can have it up on the screen. Micah says, he hath showed thee, O man, what is good. Micah 6 and verse 8. And what doth the Lord require of thee? We want to switch and we want to sharpen our focus. As a people, as a church, as a child of God. Where is Micah chapter 6 and verse 8? He hath showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly. And to love mercy. And to walk humbly with thy God. Sharpening our focus is understanding what the Lord requires from you and I. Praise the Lord. Not what we perceive it to be. He had showed thee what is good. The wise man said, We have found Michael chapter 6, verse 8. Okay, in all thy getting, get understanding. Praise the Lord. Solomon said, in all your getting, get understanding. He said, if riches increase, set not your heart on it. For where your heart is, where your treasure is, hallelujah, there will your heart be also. 
In Colossians chapter 3 and verses 1, it says, If Christ be risen from, from, from the dead, then we should seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the Father. Verse 3 says, set not your affection. The operative word that church is to set something in place. If we set our affection on the things of this earth, we have switched our focus from God, from Christ, onto material things. Praise the Lord. We are not to put even our children our jobs above God. He would not settle for second place. I will challenge every person in here, put God second, and when you look for him, he won't be there. Because you will not settle for second place. I've had people say to me, well, Pastor Lynch, Johnny couldn't be here today. I said, really, he's sick? He said, no, he's not sick, but you know, exams. My kids, I always tell them, every exam that shows up on your desk at school, God has to prepare you for it. If you're in the house of God, teach your children the way they should go. Teach your children the way they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. Teach your children to put God first. You think you can pass the exam on your own? Do you see how many accidents on the highway? And do you boast yourself that you can drive? Do you know there are people on these highways in Toronto that came from different parts of the globe? And so some places where they never saw a vehicle in their life until they want to bring them to the airport. And they come here and they get a license in three months. And I'm driving for 35 years and they come and they hit me. I don't trust in my ability. I trust in God who can shield me. Praise the Lord. Our children need to understand that they can be an educated failure. And I should add an educated, graduated failure. We can't get anywhere without Christ. Praise the Lord. But he can take us everywhere. Praise the Lord. He can take us everywhere. Just ask Daniel. Just ask Joseph. Just ask Moses. He can take you and I anywhere. Praise the Lord. He will bring you before kings and magistrates. Bless the Lord. He'll make you baffle the doctors and the philo 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 philosophers. That tongue is dying up. Praise the Lord. But my God can do it all. We need to realign ourselves. We need to recalibrate ourselves. We need to refocus our thinking, refocus our action, refocus our reaction to things that come in our lives on a daily basis. Praise the Lord. Challenges will come. Trouble will come. Sickness will come. But the Lord is there. Praise the Lord. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Praise the Lord. So take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Bless the Lord. Let not your heart be troubled. Praise God. 
Jesus said in Matthew 24 that in our times, men heart shall be failing them for fear for those things that is coming upon the land. Have you seen your television lately? Or your devices? Just yesterday I had a mass shooting in Virginia Beach. An employee, a colleague, a colleague walks into the workplace and kills 12 of his colleagues. Well, 11 of his colleagues. One of them was a contractor who came for a permit. The arms of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, there's a song that I always want to get rid of in the songbook. Take my life and let it be. Because one verse in the song says, take my silver and my gold. Not a dime would I withhold. I say, what a lie. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That means every time you come into the house of the Lord, you should leave broke. And start all over again. Amen. We got to refocus church. We got to understand that God has called us at this time for a special purpose. Praise the Lord. There are people hurting out there. There are people dying. There are people who just doesn't know their way to God. He's got to use you and I. Praise the Lord. Our attitudes must come in line. Our speech must come in line. Our dressing, our actions, everything about us must scream Christ in us. Praise the Lord. That where you go, people will entertain you and say, you know what? And I want to emulate that sister. I want to emulate that brother. I had a sister, loose, I'm using the term loosely. I had a sister who used to work at one of my workplaces. And I came in one day and I realized, but I know this girl. To make a long story short, people says, I heard that that's your sister in your church. I said, you're yeah, a different church. Because the attitude and the dress and everything else wasn't speaking sister. It was talking somebody I met at Carnival. Somebody who was ready to jump up. We represent Christ. We need to be focused on representing Christ. Toronto and the entire coast to coast to coast in Canada is going crazy. Raptors only win one game. Now that celebration could throw off the focus. And they can drop the ball for game two tomorrow. God forbid. But you have heard many times that people tell you, stay focused. When I was learning, when I got my first two-wheel bike, because I like the three-wheel, it's safer. I got my first two-wheel bike. And my dad is holding the seat at the back. And I'm holding the handles and I'm looking down like this at the front wheel. And he said, focus where you're going, not where you are. And I would look up a bit and I would look back down because I want to see where this wheel is going. And he would say, boy, I said, look where you're going, not where you are. And that's what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Focus on where you're going, not where you are presently. Praise the Lord, because God is taking us somewhere. God is taking us somewhere. Let not your heart be troubled. Bless the Lord. I'll give you another piece of nugget of Lynch's brain. I always say that I only need enough space to sleep at night. Because I'm never home. So I don't want any more space than three feet by six. 
And it's funny because I always tell the kids that I said, once I have enough space that I can sleep at night, I don't want to be worrying about what's happening in the other three rooms. And you know, some houses like a shopping mall. Back in the 80s, my wife and I used to do house cleaning. And we'll go in these huge houses in Ottawa to clean these houses. And they'll be like the husband and the wife alone with three dogs. And it's like five bedrooms. And each bedroom is like a whole apartment. And these folks live. And I say to myself, I says, well, they got their mansion, so they don't need what Jesus is offering. I need what Jesus is offering. Praise the Lord. He's offering us reconciliation. To be reconciled back with God the Father. Praise the Lord. You know, I've seen people in their 70s and their 80s and they've walked with Christ for like 50, 60 years. But boy, are they still focused? Because I remember when I just came and I was between 10 and 12, somewhere in there. And I'm excited. Everything the preacher said, say amen. Never check to see if it was true or not. Everything he said was gospel truth because it's coming from the pulpit. That's a big mistake, church. Trust me. Paul said to do like the Berians do. Check that thing out. Check that brother out. Make sure that what he's saying is in line with what the word is. Praise the Lord. And I was passionate. And you know, passion drives your performance. Just ask Kyle Laurie and these guys. Passion drives your performance. Let's ask someone who is in love. Courting. Crazy, you know. Courting, you don't care what your parents say. Advice doesn't come go through one ear and come out the next. It just bounces from that ear. It never gets registered. Because you, you're passionate. Passion drives your performance. But the church needs to stay focused. Praise the Lord. The church needs to stay focused. Not to just get the focus and then move away. You've got to stay focused. Praise the Lord. You've got to stay focused. Because our adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. I've spoken to many people who over the years had been on their journey with the Lord. I said, brother, what's happening? Or sister, what's happening? Church, just, church ain't for me. Church ain't for me. In the book of John, Jesus Christ was explaining a few things. And he said, you know, no one can come to me except my father. Who is in heaven draws him or her. And many times you see young people get baptized. And when a young brother or sister gets baptized church, it's different to when someone who's in their 40s, 50s, and 60s have lived a little, experienced the world. And it's not the same when a teenager accepts the Lord. It's a different level of focus. Praise God. All I'm saying is, while you're setting your focus, understand your surrounding. Praise the Lord. Because sometimes, even in the Raptors celebration, you got some foolish people doing foolish things. I saw a 23-year-old was killed, I think in Hamilton, celebrating two nights ago, and he was killed during the celebration. I want us to celebrate more. Because Raptors ain't win nothing yet. That's the ECC, that is nothing. When they win the NBA, it's a whole different celebration. 
But think about what we have won. The Bible says, up from the grave he arose, a mighty victor over his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever. Hallelujah. And John says, behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called sons of God. Now it doth not appear what we shall be. Focus. Focus. But we know. We know. Paul said, I know whom I have believed in. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him. Against that day. The church needs to refocus. The church needs to stay focused. Praise the Lord. Everyone in this building knows that we function and we live in this world. So when it says to abandon the world, then we got to know what the word requires from us. He hath showed thee what is good. The Lord bless you. That's my prayer in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, church. If you are satisfied with the word today, could you put your hands together again for Pastor Lynch? As we're about to conclude the service today, I'd like to, he read from the book of Psalm 91, and he read verse 3. But I'd like to read verse 1 and 2 to remind you of the great, commitment that God has made to us. It reads, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I want you to leave today knowing that the scriptures is emphatic. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. As we switch our focus and sharpen our focus today based on the thoughts and scriptures given by the man of God, I am confident that you and I are walking away from this place today saying, I am under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Amen. Nothing to fear. I am under the shadow of the Almighty. For those watching online, we want to thank you for joining us today. We trust that your hearts have been blessed by the words spoken by Pastor Lynch, by the worship, by the hymns, by everything that was done today. We look forward to you joining us next week. To conclude this service, may I invite the congregation after the introduction of this hymn, hymn number 218. It was written by one of the most famous men, Ira D. Sankey. The Lord's our rock, in him we hide. A shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever ill be time. A shelter in the time of storm.
we have a special individual in our audience, Deacon Kerr from the congregation in Oshawa. He will be praying for those of us here today who require prayer. If you have lost focus, or if you wish to sharpen your focus, or if you are sick, if you're traveling, whatever is going on in your life and you need prayer, we're going to invite you to come right now and be prayed for as we sing the refrain. Just come forward and believe God that he will meet your need. morning to this hour. We recognize, Lord, that without you at the elm, our sailing is in vain. Father, we thank you for your word of truth. We thank you for the assembling together of ourselves to hear you, the droppings of your word. We recognize, Lord, your care for us is awesome, and we thank you. We ask, dear God, that your word would not come in our ears and depart through the neck, but that it will find a resting place in our hearts, that our lives will be shaped transformed, renewed by you as we live our lives daily and we walk in the countenance, your countenance, in the light of your countenance. Father, I thank you again for those who have made a commitment to you and for the testimonies they have been able to to give concerning your leading and guidance and protection. Today, there are those at the altar who have come for prayer. Lord, you are the God who knows all things. We just thank you that more and more our confidence is in thee. And as they come to you, Lord, I just ask that you would minister unto them, that you would grant unto them the desire of their hearts. For truly, some trust in chariots and some in horses. But you, we, the people who you have called, will remember the name of the Lord our God. They have come to you for comfort, for strength, for guidance, for deliverance, and for your peace. Great peace of they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend thee. Today, Lord, we ask that you would grant them your peace as they depart, that whatever their request is, or request 
whatever they desire of you, according to your will, you will grant it unto them. And that they would leave in faith, believing, and embrace the peace which cometh only from you, because thus saith the Lord. Father, today we thank you for a wonderful day in your courts. We ask that you will bless your people, that you will cause your face to shine upon them, that you will grant them the wisdom needed to navigate this life, this Christian life, and to live a life pleasing in your sight. These are not the mercies we humbly ask and tell you thanks in the name of Jesus. Deacon Kirk. We'd like to thank God for the preacher today who gave us such a wonderful stirring message, which I have received as well.